Jerry at Fair Oaks. Hiya, Harold. Hey, did you get a letter, too? Yeah, did you? Uh-huh. It's from my guardian, Mr. Randall. Mine's from my dad, and am I glad to hear from him. I was getting worried. I haven't had a letter since last week. What are you heading for? I'm going to meet Lee over by the gym. Then we're going down to the lake. Hey, you want to come along? Okay. <sighs> hey, what did your dad have to say? Well, he took up most of the letter telling me about that new speed ship he tested for Hayden Aircraft. Hey, that's right. You did say something about him testing out a new kind of airplane. Uh-huh. He says it's the fastest job he's ever flown, and he thinks he might get to fly it in the big air races next month. Boy, that'll be keen. You know, your dad must be a wonderful pilot. He is. I guess he's just about the best in the country. I'm not just saying that because he's my dad either. It's true. Yeah, I know. He's tested every kind of a plane there is, from little speed jobs to great transports. And you know what, Jerry? No, what? He's never had one serious accident. Oh, he's nosed over a couple of times, but he never really had a crack-up. Boy, that's a keen record. All the test pilots I've read about have had plenty of bad crack-ups. Yeah, I know. That's the trouble. What do you mean? Well, just like you say, there isn't a one of them that doesn't get it sooner or later. Dad's just been lucky, that's all. I sure wish he'd quit, Jerry. Oh, no, you don't mean that. Yes, I do. Dad's all I've got in this world, and if he'd crack up and anything should happen to him, I'd... Oh, I hate to even think about it. Oh, he's not going to crack up. Not Guy Linwell. I hope you're right, but you never know, Jerry. You know, there'll be all kinds of jobs he can get in the aviation if he'd only take them. I mean, jobs where there isn't so much risk. Mm, Yeah, I suppose there are, but at the same time, there's an awful big thrill in being a test pilot. Sometimes people don't care about risk or money or fame or or anything if they're doing the thing they want to do. Your dad loves his job, Harold. Why, if he had to just do ordinary flying, it would be like you and me playing hide-and-seek after we learned to play football. Well, I suppose so. (laughs) I never saw anybody like you before. You sure do a lot of worrying for your age. Forget about it and let your dad do the worrying. He'll take care of himself. Yeah, I guess you're right. (whistles) Who's that? Oh, Lee. Oh, hi, Lee. About time. What do you mean? I thought you said you were coming right over here. Well, I did, didn't I? I'm here. Hello, Harold. Hi, Lee. I've been waiting about five minutes for you. Oh, I stopped and got my mail, and then I met Harold here, and we came right over. Oh, did you get a letter? Uh Uh-huh, from Mr. Randall. Hmm, swell. What do you have to say? Oh, nothing much, except they got back to the circus all right after they left here, and that it seemed a little strange the first couple of days not having me around. Hmm, did he say anything about your dog? Uh Uh-huh. He said that Rags was swell and that Bumps was taking good care of him. I didn't know you had a dog, Jerry. Oh, yes, he's got an awfully nice little dog. I saw him. Did you bring him to school with you? Yeah, Mr. Randall thought maybe they could put Rags up someplace or maybe make him a mascot of one of the teams or something. Fine chance. Yeah, I found that out. <laughs> oh, hey, Jerry, I meant to tell you. I was talking with Ted Metcalf, and he said that Mac was figuring on going to the bank to see about mortgaging his store. Mac told Ted he needed some money right away. What? That's what he said. Now, uh, how about that idea of yours? You said you thought you could get him the money for his, uh, you know what I mean. Hey, what is this? It's a secret, Harold. We promise not to tell anybody. Okay, if you fellas want to talk, I'll run on ahead. Oh, that's the boy, Harold. You won't mind? No, that's okay. It'll only take us a minute or so. I can't imagine where you'd be able to get $200, but, well, if you know of some way, I sure think it would be swell if you'd get it for Mac. You can tell he's got his mind made up to go ahead and make a working model of that invention. 
Well, I think he should. I think it's wonderful. So do I. Now, can I help you any with your idea? No. I'll tell you what I have in mind, Lee. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, I've got some money of my own. Just the $200. Have you got that much? Yeah, and then some. I got a whole lot more than that. Where'd you ever get it? Well, my dad left me some property, and I sold it to a railroad company. Oh, well, where is the money? Mr. Randall put it in a bank for me. Oh. Well, do you think they'll let you have it? Well, I guess so. It's mine, and if I write to him and ask him for then it... tell he'll... him what you want it for? Oh, sure. Well, he might send it to you. But uh, when are you going to write and ask him? I'll do it tonight. If I knew where I could get the money, I'd do it in a minute. It's swell to be able to help somebody, and especially to be able to help put over a great invention like Max. Well, I'll write tonight to Mr. Randall, and I should get an answer and maybe the money in a couple of days. Oh, this way, Jerry, if we're going down to the boathouse. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, slow up, Harold. Okay. We won't say any more about it now. All right. Did you get all through? Uh-huh. What are you going out to the boathouse for? Well, Jerry and I are going to see Captain Rowland about getting on the plebe crew. You are no fooling. That's right. Boy, I sure hope you make it. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. I'll go out in the, uh, on the pier then while you talk to the captain. Okay, and as soon as we're through, we'll come out there. Good luck to you. I'll be waiting out the end of the pier. <sighs> hey, do you think Captain Rowland is out here now? Mm-hmm, yes, he'll most likely be here in the boathouse. Hey, that's where they keep the racing shells and the oars and all the equipment, isn't it? That's right. And the rowing machines, too. The rowing machines? Mm, sure, that's what I'm in for. Uh, what do you mean, Lee? Well, first I'll have to learn how to row on the machine and develop strength and learn timing before I ever get in a shell and get out on the water. Oh, look, Jerry, there's Captain Rowland now. Oh, is that Captain Rowland? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know who he is. I've seen him in school. He teaches uh, languages, doesn't he? Mm, yeah, that's right. Oh, Captain Rowland? Cadet Phillips? This is Cadet Jerry Dubin, Captain Rowland. Oh, yes. How do you do, young man? Captain Gardner was telling me about you. Did you come out to look over our crew headquarters? Well, Captain Rowland, Cadet Dugan and I would like to make application for the plebe crew. Well, now, so that's it. All right. I'll take your application, Phillips. You look as though you might turn out to be a pretty fair stroke. And I'd like to apply for the position of coxswain. Good for you, Dugan. You look like you're just the man for it, if you can hold the job down. I've been wondering where I was going to get a coxswain for the plebe crew. I'm glad you boys came out. Now I should have a full list by next week. Then I'll start some tests and get lined up. A call for the test will be posted on the bulletin board, as usual. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain Rowland. Not at all. I'll be very glad to have you with us. Uh, look around, if you like, and get familiar with the pier. Yes, sir. Hey, look here, Lee. This is the machine you were telling me about. Uh-huh, yeah, that's a rowing machine. Oh, come here, Jerry. Yeah, uh, what do you got? Look, look at this shell here. See this little seat at the back? Uh-huh. That's where you'll sit and steer. <laughs> it's not much of a seat, is it? Well, it's big enough. Yeah, if somebody doesn't rock the boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, we better get out on the pier. Harold's waiting for us. Hey, that's right. Come on. Oh, Captain Rowland. Yes, Phillips? If you'll excuse us, sir, one of the other boys is waiting for us. Oh, surely, surely. Go right ahead. But come out again some afternoon before I call practice, and I'll explain some of the things you should know about rowing. Yes, sir, we'll do that. Goodbye, sir. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, we took the first step, Lee. Mm-hmm, and boy, we're off. <laughs> There's no stopping us. He... Does the plebe crew race the upperclassmen's crew? Is that the way they do it? Mm, yes. Yes, there's some mixed competition between all the crews, and then later on we race other schools. No fooling. Mm -hmm. Say, that'll be keen. Well, haven't you seen all the cups the different Fair Oaks crews have won? No. Well, where are they? In the trophy case, right by Major Davis's office in Custis Hall. Say, you should see them. You know, Fair Oaks has been turning out some great crews. You know, Lee, I'm beginning to like it here better every day. I told you you would. I had a lot of fun when I was with the circus, but... Well, I think I'm going to have more fun here at Farrell. Oh, well, I'll say you will. Just wait till you see your first big football game. And wait till we travel to other schools for important games. Oh, you've never had so much fun in all your life. Hey, look. No, over there to the left. Oh. Uh, who does that look like coming down the trail from the stable? Uh-oh, Red Morrison. Yeah, that's who I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And he's heading this way. Hey, did you make it? Captain Rowland took our names down. Yes, the captain said Jerry looked like a very good prospect for Coxon of the plebe crew. Good. Boy, I'm sure glad. And are you going to roll in? Mm-hmm. Hey, what are you doing with those stones in your hand? Oh, just throwing them in the water. Here he comes, Jerry. Who? Oh, Red. The fun's all over, boys. Yeah, he's sort of been keeping to himself since he got demoted. Yeah, maybe he's been trying to work off those demerits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess he doesn't like the idea of being a plain cadet after being an officer. Uh oh He's not coming out here. He's going into the boathouse. Oh, that's fine. Oh, now, Harold, what were you doing with those stones? 
Well, come over here by the edge of the pier. I'll show you. Okay. Well, go ahead. Well, look. First, I throw a stone in like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Then I try to hit the bullseye with the next stone. The bullseye? Sure. See those rings the stone makes in the water? Oh, I see. Well, go ahead and throw the next stone before those ripples fade out. <laughs> oh, you uh -oh. missed the mark. That's because I waited too long. Mm -hmm. Hey, give me a stone and let me try it. Now, you throw the first one, and I'll try to hit the middle of the rings. Okay, here. Now, here she goes. All right. Watch me now. Oh, <laughs> good for you, Jerry. <laughs> good hit. Say, do you have any more stones, Harold? Two pockets full. <laughs> Two pockets full. Hey, look at all those stones. <laughs> hey, didn't you leave any on the beach at all? Oh, <laughs> sure. There's millions of them. Really? Yeah. Oh, thanks. All right, now go ahead and throw the first one. Ready? Let it go. Oh. <laughs> Almost, but you didn't come as close to the middle as I did. Want to try it again? Yes, go ahead. Throw it. Hey, look out. Don't lean over so far, Harold. You'll fall in. The water's plenty deep out here at the end of the pier. Don't forget, you can't swim. Oh, I'm all right. Yes, but you better stand back a ways. If you lose your balance, you'll be in the lake before you know it. You ready now? Uh-huh, okay. Here goes. Mm, how's that? <laughs> okay, you direct it Oh, that's it perfect. Oh, that game's a little too easy, Harold. Sure, it's easy, but it's fun. Come on, Jerry. Let's sit on this bench a while. Harold, you go ahead and throw all those stones and fill up the whole lake. <laughs> we'll be sitting right over here. Okay. Hey, look. Red's coming out here now. Mm, sure enough. Come on, sit down. Don't say anything about his uh, being demoted. Oh, don't worry, Lee. <laughs> I won't. Hello, Phillips. Dugan. Hello, Red. Hi, you, Red. What's going on out here on the pier? Oh, nothing. Hey, look at Harold's leaning way out again. Oh, look out. Harold, be careful. Oh! Oh, gosh, I told him to be careful. Harold. Splash Help. around a little, Harold. Help. I'll get you. Hey, wait till I get my shoes off. Captain Roland. Help. Captain Roland. Oh, hurry, Jerry. He's going down. There's no time to wait for taking off your shoes, Dugan. You can help by holding my cap. Here. Hurry, Red. Grab him. He's sinking. Here comes Captain Roland with a lifeline. Oh, why doesn't Red grab him? Get hold of him, Red. Oh, Red's clothes and shoes are waiting him down, Jerry. Well, he better hurry and grab Harold or it'll be too late. Swim harder, Red. He's going down for the third time. Oh, hurry. poor Harold. Golly, Lee, this is awful. Hurry, Red, swim. Swim. <laughs> 